Welcome back, I'm Chrissy and in this video I'm going to tell you how I started working on my pixel adventure game The Lost Hotel. As I mentioned in the video before, I wanted to begin with designing the game art, so I wouldn't have to work with placeholder graphics. But before I was ready to draw the first pixel, I needed a plan. I wrote down all my ideas wildly in notebooks, on pieces of papers, in a notes app, on a virtual Trello board, it was a mess. It all began with completely different ideas until I had one in mind that worked for me. The most important thing for me was, what's the goal of the game? Why would people start playing my game and continue playing it? So I roughly outlined the whole story from beginning to end, thinking about what the player's journey should look like, focusing on the idea of a main purpose. Like the structure of a short story, the story of the Lost Hotel should include a slow but engaging introduction, a rising action where the actual story picks up speed and builds to an exciting climax, perhaps with an interesting plot twist, a fast-falling action and a slow and cozy conclusion where the player feels like they could play on forever. I don't know if I could pull that off, but you know, at least I could try. Maybe you need some goals to drop at the end. <laughs> okay, now let's add a pinch of science to the whole jumble of ideas and plans. There is this guy named Richard Bartle who invented the Bartle taxonomy of player types, which describes four different types of players. Socializers, Achievers, Explorers and Killers. Although I do not need to make my game attractive to all four types of players, there is a chance to cover at least some aspects that might be appealing to half of the player types, while focusing on the other two types. Let's start with the Socializers. In addition to the story, I thought about interesting in-game characters that the player not only wants to interact with, but also wants to come back from time to time to check in with them. I like the idea of providing a safe space for the player just to hang out for a bit, take a break from a stressful day and not have to do any time-critical tasks. The NPCs should be accessible to the player all the time, so they like to talk to them, try to find out things about their stories, their relations and their secrets, and even influence how they develop throughout the game. And what they tell you should not just be empty words or random texts. I want to provide interaction, dialogues and also a way to get out of a conversation whenever the player wants. Next, the achievers. When it comes to achievements, there will be some skills the players can master, information that can be gathered and the game can be finished with a completion rate of 100%. But that may not be enough to appreciate the achievers progress, so I would definitely like to think about a way to visualize these achievements. For example, if you master a skill like crafting or arts, you can decorate the hotel with fancier stuff or unlock areas where new side quests can be done and for each success there is a possibility to gain trophies. Also, the aspect of randomness can spice up the whole achievement situation, so there could be a little gamble for collectibles that won't have an impact on the game itself. Let's take a look at the explorers. Well, there is this hotel that I've tried to make unique by setting it in space and giving it a slightly cyberpunk, retrofuturistic, art deco feel from the early to mid 1900s, like you might remember from the movie Hotel Artemis or Passengers. The hotel has many rooms the player can unlock, explore and actively or passively change their appearance as the story unfolds. Also, the story itself and the different backstories of the in-game characters can be explored by solving puzzles, completing main and side quests or getting closer to them by socializing. Alright, last but not least, the The killer. killer. Um, what's there to kill anyway? I don't want to overload my game with gathering resources by killing monsters or fighting villains and bosses. In fact, Bartle's taxonomy of the killer type doesn't mean that there have to be creatures that can actually be killed violently. It also means that there's a way to act competitively to reach a high score or make the fastest speedrun. There's not really anything I can provide for this kind of gameplay other than the simple ability to finish the game in an unspecified time that the player might want to beat. So let's just say my game isn't going to be very (laughs) killer-attracting. Having my idea and my characters roughly sketched out, I wrote everything down in a somewhat better organized Trello board and some mind maps. 
Eventually, I won't be able to avoid writing a structured and well-maintained game design document. The Bible of my game, actually. Yeah, I haven't had the muse to do that yet, so I'll rely on my notes until they become a messy behemoth again. <laughs> okay, that's enough for today. Next time I will show you how I designed my in-game characters and their backstories. Have a nice day and tschüss!